camera sync audio. What's up everybody, Rabbit Hedgehog here, still at Indian of OKC, and another used bike for you guys. And this is actually a very requested bike, and it's something that our local Suzuki dealerships do not want to let out the door for some reason, which is kind of annoying. They don't even put gas on these things or batteries, but Boulevard M50. So I did the C90. Last year and now I've been asked if I could do the 50 quite regularly and for some reason you know like I said I've been offered to ride for somebody but never got a chance to do so as you can see though good looking bike shaft drive something to note Taking a look around it right there. Nice looking V-twin engine. Good looking bike all together. I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> There's a drum in the back there. Liquid cooled. Yeah, just taking a good look around it. Good looking machine though. Kind of reminiscent of a smaller M109. Even the dash cluster is kind of the same thing with the M109. It has that two parts. Granted, it doesn't have any information here except for your turn signals, fuel injection, neutral, and bright. The rest of it's up there, whereas the M109 has tachometer or something down there, you know, different, different layouts. So pop that on there real quick. See it pop up. Notice it has its oil light, temperature. There's your scroll right there. All right, and we'll go ahead and scroll it. There's your odometer, 3,926 on this one. Barely any mileage on it, clock, and that's it. No tachometer, just a speedometer, a little fuel gauge down there. Like I said, temperature indication, oil indication. Not much to this bike, which is not a bad thing. Hazards, flash pass, bright. Turn signal, push cancel, horn. Engine cutoff switch and start. So let's go ahead, climb up on her, and see how she rides. All right, as I'm getting ready to climb up on it, one thing I do want to point out is it does actually have an inverted front suspension, which is awful sporting of it. <laughs> All right. Nice wide motorcycle. All right. you see a little bit of vibration coming through all sitting at idle these mirrors adjusted out <laughs> now this bike squarely puts itself pretty much in competition with a honda shadow in a sense not much different size actually feels kind of about the same stance Cable actuated clutch. Very low to the ground. <laughs> it slapped the ground really quick with my foot on accident. Didn't even think about it. Woo, compression braking, great. <laughs> Yeah, this thing will stop itself practically on engine braking alone. Very reminiscent of a Honda Shadow 750. Very reminiscent. Not the most powerful machine for sure. 
has old school kind of vibey feels to it. Nice, wide, comfortable, plush, forward mounted pegs. Very short though. You'll see my knees are standing above the tank right now. So I need a little bit more leg room on this particular machine for sure. <laughs> I think the shadow actually offered me a little bit better position in terms of where my feet laid. But I gotta say there's adequate room for my foot in this little pedal box. I can still move around maneuver. But man, it's shorter than I was expecting it to be. And I will say that the handlebars are in a good spot. They fall very neutral. So my arms at my shoulders come straight down to my elbows and then straight from my elbow up to the grip. These are big, thick grips too for this big hand and that is something I like. Oh, suspension is telling me about life there. <laughs> Probably need to do some preload on that. Now the front is working great. Uh, it is not a preload adjustable front. Back I did not preload. I probably should have spent a moment to do that because this is a lighter cruiser after all. But overall though, I mean, it's no different than any Sportster or any Scout or anything I've ever done that's got three inch suspension travel on the back, three and a half inch. I'm not exactly sure where it is. I'll put all detailed specifications in comments as I always do or in the uh, description below. So that way you get the actual amount, but it feels that that's about where the travel is and how it punches you, so. It is, of course, a five-speed transmission, very wide ratio. Except for the first two gears, they're very short. You gotta get out of them pretty quick. But for the open road, and we're in 20 mile an hour winds, this bike is handling it just fine. Of course, it does have wide tires, big wide stance, fairly heavy motorcycle. A little bit of wind took me there for a moment, but overall, very stable platform, very comfortable. Like I said, I, I could use maybe about like that, having my feet, if, I, if you can see that, out to about there would be great, but the platform is just too short for that kind of activity. So that would be the that'd be ideal for me. So definitely, if you're shorter, this bike will work out for you pretty nicely. And it is so short to the ground. I mean, I did not realize how close that seat was until I put my foot down on that first stop and I slapped it really hard, thinking I was going to hit the ground a little bit later than that. Nope, it was right there. <laughs> near immediate so nice low seat height and the engine's humming around really nicely right now I'm in fourth gear dropped it down to go a little bit slower speed through this zone here and you can see a little bit of vibrations coming through the hand grips and everything very mild though you can feel them in the foot pegs as well around your knees as well where your knees are gripping the tank so, uh, you know, this bike is a bike. You can definitely feel it's a bike. And there's no problem with that. Oh, this suspension though, needs a little bit more weight to it. The front, like I said, is seemingly pr doing pretty good, but the back is really bouncy. The front feels planted though as we go through these. The back is what feels like it wants to walk away from me. And that could be as simple as a preload. thing is, when you ride one of these kind of cruisers, you kind of expect a different drive system than a, than a shaft. You expect a belt, generally. And I have to say that I like the way the shaft is handling it. I don't feel any jacking or anything from it. And like I said, I don't have any tachometer. But I can tell you, it gets vibe heavy closer to the highway speeds. You can see, if you can see through there, I don't know if the GoPro can, 
you know, show that. That Dodge looks like a blur in the back. I mean, it, you can tell it's a Dodge, but all you see is like blue blur back there. So it is very, very uh, buzzy at the higher speeds. And its acceleration and top gear is nothing to write home about. It's a very just calm cruising bike. It's a bike that you could definitely take around the city if you need to on roads like this. And that way you can get to and from work. Good commuter bike. And it's really well planted too. And it's comfortable too. So, I mean, it will do long distancing for sure, but it'll work really well as a commuter bike as well. The only reason I'm probably a little bit more bitter toward it is because it's so short. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, you plant it. Look at that. I don't know if you can really see that, but those car headlights, it's just all a blur now. Back off and you get it down in lower RPM. The engine starts to tame out and really does go smooth, but at higher speeds toward highway speeds, it will vibrate you on you. And I am in the top gear possible, so. All right. Transmission on this bike is nice. It's not notchy whatsoever, very smooth and precise. Engine braking on it also, very good. Just nice light. Ah, once again, catch the light at the right time. Foot was dragging there. You can't hear my foot drag, but like I said, it's so short. It's just, Everything's going to hit before I can hit the peg. <laughs> but as an entry level cruiser, I mean, this is pretty bomb. Nice little cruise. It just burbles right along. It's really happy in this range right now. We're doing 45 miles an hour. There we go. I'll just grab fifth gear finally. And even then, it burbles right along quite happily. It's a little bit happier in fourth gear. We'll go back down there. Now I say the clutch is nice and light. I mean, it nice pull on it, not heavy, very easy to use. Your friction zone is about actually four claw or four position on this one. So almost all the way out. It catches a little bit later than normal, but these are cable actuated. So work away on it. You can make it where you want it. Everything's pretty visible on this. I can actually see the speedometer and everything really well. I like that heads up right there that I can see. <laughs> this thing just, look at this thing just slowing down. There's no regular braking on this at all right now. All right. Let's see what she does here. Oh man, the vibes get out so heavy. <laughs> My feet were just rocking right there. <laughs> Uh, first gear, maybe 30 miles an hour. <laughs> not very, they're not a very wide ratio, but for a cruiser though in the city, this is perfect. Like I said, it barbles really happily at this speed. About 45, 50 miles an hour. So your city surface streets are pretty much in between there, maybe 30 miles an hour. It likes that too. It's just nice and tame. Just a lovely little bike. Emphasis on little. <laughs> Even with that air cleaner there, I mean, I'm not really bumping it at all because, like I said, I'm just so in there. I, I'm missing it, but it's just I feel I feel so tiny. I feel so big on such some, something so tiny. But it rides it rides really well. I like it though. I, I like this actually better than the shadow. I don't know if my video on the shadow ever came out because I think I had some issues with my GoPro on that day, but I like the shadow, but this one, here, let's go some braking. Oh, very soft. Yee, get to the threshold, man. Ah, yeah, these brakes are old school. <laughs> man, that is just a short distance to the ground. I keep whacking that ground because it's just right there. <laughs> yeah, these brakes, uh, these brakes are old school. You can definitely tell old school drum, single disc up front. I mean, they work. Uh, they're going to, they're going to get a C though from me. 
<laughs> so they're average. But they're not bad. They'll they'll get this thing down. <laughs> Really, I mean, in city traffic, this thing accelerates just fine. It's it's a really good motorcycle for commuting, for sure. I would love to have this to be tearing around town with and bombing around town. It's a cool looking bike, big bike, comfortable, super light steering. I mean, it'll dive beautifully. Wish we had roads to prove that, but it, I mean, it's gonna to touch down very quickly too at the same time. But I mean, it, very easy presses on these bars and this bike is ready to turn. But I love the overall look. I mean, the fit and finish is, eh, you know, marginal, average at best, you know. But I mean, overall though, you can't complain about it. It's a great way to get into a motorcycle. It seriously is. If you're looking to get back into motorcycling, you're looking to start on a motorcycle, you're looking for that first bike ever, this is a great first bike. It is not overly powerful or scary or anything like that. Boy, I'm telling you the compression braking is better than the regular braking. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let's beat this van. <laughs> But I mean, you can see, I mean, it doesn't have the power to just rip you away or anything like that, but it has a good, decent amount on it, but it's so usable, it's tame. And the suspension, yes, I, I think the back end needs a little bit more, but I am heavier, I'm 209 pounds. My end seam is 32 inches and I myself is about a little over six foot tall. I'm not six foot one, just a smidge over. And uh, you know, this bike very short for me, but I'd still enjoy it. If I could get a little bit more extension, let's go ahead and probably tap down there. There's a tap down. Dragging the foot again. <laughs> Bounce, 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 that back in. <laughs> but you can see I'm getting up to 70 just fine on that on-ramp. It has plenty of power. Like I said, you can get that vibration back when you're back on the highway. But man, it rides really sweet. I mean, I cannot complain about this thing's ride. I really do like this one quite a bit more than the Honda Shadow. It just has a little bit more character to it. It's a bit bigger, you know, in terms of how it feels and, and, and I mean, in, in the width and things and the grips and stuff. It just has this, this, if it only had one thing and it's a little bit more length, it'd be darn perfect. You know, the C90 was perfect. It was a great sitting bike. It was perfect in every way for my size. This one just needs to have that about inch and a half, two inch, three inch, six inches, <laughs> a little bit more on the control surface there. And it would be perfect for a long cruise. But for the city, this thing is bomb. And it's just so so wonderful to ride. I mean, it, it it just loves this speed right here. I get it, yes, let everybody pass me, but come on guys, I mean, this is supposed to be a construction zone. But let's be honest, this is what this thing is designed for, just nice little stints going through, going to work, going to the, see your friends, riding a little bit outside of the town. I mean, this thing, handles it. I wish that the suspension in the back would be better. I wish the brakes would be better, but this is this is the essence of motorcycling. This is what motorcycles should be. Simple and fun to use. And that's what it is. It's bringing quite a bit of joy to me right now. Uh, yeah, you can hear every time I hit a bump of thump in my voice, you know, you can hear stuff like that. But seriously, I mean, this is just riding a motorcycle. And it's great. This is how you should feel when you're riding a motorcycle. Fantastic. All 
All right, getting over those bumps there. Like I said, definitely the suspension needs a little bit of work if it's gonna hold up something this heavy. But overall though, I have been on worse. And I'm, that's the whole thing, I have been on worse. The shaft is a great drive on this thing. It doesn't cause it to have any weird pull or anything to the side that the shaft's spinning on. Everything's great there. No shaft jacking up and down shifting. Transmission is great. Light pull on the clutch. Everything's easy to get to. Adjustable brake. Uh, so everything's pretty nice. Like I said, the only thing I got to truly, truly complain about is just it's just a little bit too short for somebody my size. Everything else, though, is the essence of motorcycling and the way it should be. It handles traffic, it handles turns. Of course, it torches down very quickly, but it does so well. It's just, it's just doing good at doing what it's supposed to do. And it makes me happy to see a bike like this. And it's not a bad price range either to get into a motorcycle. You can find these used quite a bit. Little V-twin, and it just hangs with traffic and runs really well. I mean, it, like I said, feels like a motorcycle. If you don't like vibrations, don't come here. <laughs> Overall, just a fantastic package. First time on an M50. This is a, a 18 model year, so it is within the range of modern. And only 3,940 miles on it right now. And so barely even been broken, not even really broken at all. All this wind today, it's been riding really nice, planted, comfortable, big hand grips. Just, it just feels awesome. I, I just really wish that I had a little bit more room to deal with, but. Overall, fantastic motorcycle. If you're looking for your first bike ever, if you're looking to get back into motorcycling, you're looking to get into you know, a cruiser versus a sport bike, and you just want something that's secondary to your big bike, this is a great place to come to and check out. Like I said, I will take this over a Shadow. Uh, I really like the Shadows. I really, I really enjoyed riding that one, but I just like this one's attitude better. Very quiet. I mean, yeah, it's a stock exhaust, but it's just, Overall, really nice ride, planted, not having any problems with the highway, not having any problems getting around traffic or nothing. It's just working well. So yeah, if you guys definitely looking for any of those things I mentioned before, come to the M50, give it a good ride, give it a good look over, set on one, fill it out. You'll be impressed, it's a pretty good little bike. At any rate, once again, with Indian of Oklahoma City, one of their awesome used bikes out here, it can be found at 7 Northeast 10th Street, Oklahoma City. Once again, Rabbit Hedgehog is not paid to endorse them, nor is paid to ride, nor is paid to do anything by them. I'm just out here as a madman with an opinion. At any rate, keep that shiny side up, folks, and we'll catch you on the next ride. What's up, everybody? This is the Rabbit Hedgehog, and thanks once again for watching our videos. Please like, share, subscribe today if you like what you've seen. We also want to give a shout out to our dealership partners and motorcycle mechanics. We have Motive Cycle Works, Moto Guzzi out of Oklahoma City. They are both mechanic and a Moto Guzzi dealership. They are located at 906 North Ann Arbor Avenue, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma 73127 or 405 641 1801 or motivecycleworks.com. We thank Don and his crew for helping keep our CX500 running strong and awesome. Also, we want to give a big shout out to Indian of Oklahoma City, located at 7 Northeast 10th Street, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 73104, or 405-606-3615. We promise you, you will not find a better family in motorcycles that will help you get on the dream ride that you're looking for. We also want to reach out to any dealership who might be interested in letting us ride and get your videos out there and your motorcycles. Please reach us at the email in our about section. We'd like to also thank our sponsors, Law Tigers Motorcycle Lawyers, locally in Oklahoma, 405-276-4986, and 24-7 states everywhere, 1-888-863-7216. Also, Doug Crawford with Amsoil USA Synthetics. 
He can be found at usasynthetics.com or 405-388-6170, providing AMSOIL for our motorcycles and keeping them protected. Also, Enlo and Associates Insurance Agency, locally in Oklahoma at 405-261-1010. Once again, thank you so much for watching, folks. Y'all have a great one. We'll catch you on the next ride.